Hi. Here we are in the Deerfield kitchen where we do a lot of our final blending. My name is Robert Rex. I'm the founder and the winemaker for Deerfield Ranch Winery here in Kenwood, California, Sonoma Valley. We're uh, best known as blenders. We make wine from a lot of different vineyards in Sonoma County. And today we're going to talk about how we blend wine and how we relate to the wine when we're blending it. So many times when you read about wine, you read about what the wine tastes like. What we do when we blend wine is we talk about where you taste the wine rather than what it tastes like. All those metaphorical phrases, comparisons, wine writers speak. And we have different interpretations of how we relate to those flavors. What cherries taste like to one person tastes like plums to another. And uh, some of my favorite phrases, uh, cedar cigar box, rotar, rotar. What does rotar taste like? But as humans, the way our palate is set up with the different taste sensors, we taste wine pretty much all in the same place. Different varietals of grapes have their focus of their taste at various parts of the palate. So you taste Cabernet in a different place than you taste Merlot or Syrah. So the function of the blend, the purpose of the blend, is to reach all parts of the palate, leaving nothing left out, leaving nothing out of balance. So all the gaps and valleys that one variety might leave is filled in by another one. We make a lot of different wines. I pulled out three of them today as an example of the sort of thing I'm talking about. These are all blends. Red Rex, currently our most popular red blend, actually has seven wines in it, if you can believe that. Shiraz Cuvée, our newest baby, just released. Cuvée means wine blend in French. And finally, DRX. DRX is our flagship Bordeaux style blend. Winemaking is about 60% cooking and about 40% chemistry. So related in another way, the art of the winemaking is in the cooking. It's like being a great chef. Good chefs and good winemakers have a gift of a good palate. Uh, we build on that. Uh, we go to where your gift takes you and that develops a passion. We'll take Red Rex as our first example. I put all the recipes in the back of the label, actually. I started doing that because I never remember what goes in them. You know, they're all the blends are done by taste. It's like making a soup. You know, you make a soup, you start with a major ingredient. 29% Cabernet Sauvignon, 23% Merlot, 17% Syrah, 11% Petit Verdot, 9% Sangiovese, 6% Malbec, 5% Cabernet Franc. But in actuality, each one of these blends have a very important part. And that's true of all blended wines. When I talk about where the flavors appear on the palate, each one of those varieties appears in a different place. Start, start with the Cabernet Sauvignon. Cabernet has a focus in the center of the palate, but it's linear. It starts in the front and goes to the back. It doesn't have a lot of up and down flavors to it. So it goes sideways, but it does, it's not round, it's linear. I would shape it like, if I was gonna draw the flavor, it would look like a two by six. In fact, let me show you. Here's the front of the palate out here. Here's the back, or where you swallow the wine back here. Up, down, up, nasal cavity here. Bottom of the palate here. Well, two, Cabernet kind of looks like that. That's the shape of the flavor. You're gonna draw it in three dimensions. It's got a width to it. That's why I said it looks like a two by six. So when it comes in your mouth, you get a lot of length to it, a lot of breadth but you don't get a lot of up and down to it. This is why Cabernets have such great finishes because the flavors go so far back. The next wine in the Red Rex blend is Merlot, 23% Merlot. Merlot offers a frontal taste, a frontal experience. It would be shaped like a balloon. This is one reason Merlot is so aromatic because it appears in the front of the palate. So if you're gonna draw the shape of the Merlot, it would look like this, like a balloon tapers off very rapidly at the back, has all this front flavor to it. Here's the string of the balloon, so it doesn't have a long finish. Well, you can imagine, if you add the Cabernet to that, the Cabernet 
not only gives it a long finish, but it helps pull the Merlot back with it. So it lengthens the flavor of the Merlot. The third wine in this blend is 17% Syrah. Syrah is a very interesting wine. Most of the wines that are familiar as Bordeaux blenders are ethereal wines. They tend to be start at the middle of the palate and work their way up. Syrah is a grounded flavor. It's concentrated at the bottom of the palate. It starts at the bottom and works its way up. Syrah starts down here. So Syrah fills in the bottom of the palate like this. So if we add those three flavors together, you see what we've got going here. We're starting to build a con construct of flavors that fill the entire palate. The blend will vary from year to year. We want to keep the soup the same, but the blend in the soup is dependent on what you have in the refrigerator, what you get from the field. For us, it's what we get from the vineyards, what Mother Nature gives us. So the blend will vary from year to year because they're done by taste. 11% Petit Verdot. Petit, Petit Verdot concentrates its focus of flavors down towards the front lower part of the palate. So it's down here like this, Petit Verdot. So it fills in this area down here at the bottom. And then we add 9% Sangiovese. Sangiovese is actually a little bit like Merlot. It's a frontal palate experience, but it's very unique. When you drink Sangiovese, the flavors come into the middle of the palate, so it's got this fruitiness, this uh, uh, sort of fruit bomb flavor in the center, but then it comes forward again, almost like a cresting wave. If you picture a cresting wave, comes in, goes out, crests forward. It actually helps push the Merlot forward, pushes the flavors forward, so it makes them even more aromatic, uh, more ethereal. So, so Merlot is modified by the Sangiovese. So Sangiovese comes in like this, and then comes up and crests forward like a wave. The taste of Sangiovese. So you add that to our picture. Here's the Merlot. MR for Merlot. Here's the Cabernet, that two by six of Cabernet, CS. Here's the Syrah down here, SY for Syrah. In the front, bottom, Petit Verdot. Now we're gonna add the Sangiovese, that wave that we showed on the last drawing. So it comes in here, it overlaps on here, but it comes up and crests forward like this. SN, Sangiovese. So it raises the palate and brings it even more forward. And finally, we have 5% Cabernet Franc. Cabernet Franc is like dark chocolate. You know when you eat dark chocolate, you find yourself breathing out over it because you have this cocoa that goes up into your nasal cavity. Now, yeah, the women know all about this. It takes flavors up very high. You know half your taste is in your nasal cavity. It's really one of the reasons we like alcoholic beverages, particularly wine, because the alcohol evaporates so rapidly when you get it into your mouth that it takes these flavors up into your head. And that's really where half your taste experience is. So we accentuate this by adding Cabernet Franc. Cabernet Franc sits up here like this. CF Cabernet Franc. It's all up in the top. So you see what we've created in Red Rex? This full taste experience covers every part of the palate doesn't leave any part of the palate out. It gives you a full taste experience with really nothing being out of place and also nothing being too aggressive. So with uh, proper balance, uh, best barrels, a uh, long time in the barrel, and most of all the blend, we create a wine like Red Rex that uh, fills the palate with a full bodied experience, easy to drink, and perfectly balanced. And balances everything. It's like the barley soup. It's not right until you add that pinch of salt, that pinch of pepper at the end, maybe a dash of Tabasco, making the perfect barley soup. The perfect barley soup that took us three years. <laughs>